Taking an ink pen or fine tip marker, go over all of the pens where all the corrections were made in the fitting. I've gone down the side seam on the front and now I'm marking the bottom of the hem. the side seam for the side back piece. I'm taking apart the left side when the model wears it, the left side to her body, because this side I'm not going to use for pattern changes. This particular model is pretty symmetrical, so I've been able to pattern and fit from one side of the body. I am marking the shoulder change. I had pinned both shoulders and I want to compare them just to make sure that I'm taking them up uniformly. It will be easier to do the pattern making work if I get all of the muslin that I do not need out of the way. Marking on the pinned seam lines on the center front piece. And now the side front piece. Marking where the side front and the front meet at the top of the bust area. Marking the opposite shoulder. Whenever I make a mistake, 
I cross it out and if there's several lines, once I've determined the correct line, I will put little circles around it. Sketching in the new armhole edge line and the dart that I put in the neckline. Taking the shoulder seam apart. Marking the new side back seam. Marking the tip of the back neckline dart. If you remember, I penned it to be a little bit longer than the original. And with a dry iron, I'm just touching the tip of that dart to help the piece stay a little flatter. Again, no steam, just to help flatten the fabric just a little bit, doesn't need much. The surface I'm using under the cloth can take a little heat. Pressing the seam allowances flat. This is the only way I will be able to see all the corrections drawn in after the fitting. 
you remember to develop a pattern, we do not use seam allowance until the pattern is completely developed. Now I am, with corrections, redeveloping the pattern. So I want to take the first pattern, the one with no seam allowance, and align it on the muslin. I've aligned the center front, the hip, waist, and bust, and the neckline. The first thing I'm going to do is draw the new shoulder seam line and cross off the paper that will be cut away. If you remember, I lifted the shoulder seams up to make the shoulder area shorter. Now I'm drawing in the dart at the neckline. I drew it from one edge to the other edge. Drawing in the bra strap. Drawing in the new armhole edge line. Drawing the new hem line and quarter inch seam allowance. Remember that this particular top has a shaped hem line. So I will cut a facing for the finishing edge. The first thing I'm going to do is fold the dart, the new dart, shut. This will give the neckline a different shape and it will not function as a dart. It will just basically make the pattern a little bit tighter around the neck. You see the difference in the curves now. This is a steeper curve where the original neckline on the muslin to the left is a wide open curve. This will create a closer fit to the body. I've taped it completely shut. Now I am going to trim off the excess in the armhole area. So first I have to connect the dots cross out what is not going to exist on that pattern and trim away. I've trimmed the shoulder to be shorter and the armhole is closer to the body. Marking the hemline and the quarter inch seam allowance and cutting off the excess. <laughs> 
trimming off the excess around the apex area. And let's just have a look. Yep. All right, put this aside and we'll start the next piece. Side front. First, I'm going to connect the dots for the new seam line. As you can see, this eliminates where the original notches around the bust were. So I will have to reestablish those a little bit later. You can see how much more fit this is right under the bust. connecting the dots under the arm. If you remember, the armhole was a little too much fabric in the front of the body, and I'm scooping that out to have a better, looser fit in the armhole. New side seam. Now, what I'm going to do is compare the seams. The muslin on the left has not had the seam allowance cut away, but I'm going from the edge of the armholes to the first notch on the front pattern and transferring it to the side front. I'm also now going to compare the apex notch This is the waist notch, so I'm going to start at the waist and work up. Again, putting the seam line, which is the edge of the paper, against the seam line of the muslin. Marking the notch above the waist from the center front pattern piece to the muslin piece. Now I'm just putting, you see, from above the apex two inches to below the apex two inches, that's where any ease would be. And usually when you take a straight line and make a curve, which the bust on the side front is, it grows. So I'm going to measure this. Two inches above the apex, two inches below. Let's measure this again with the seam tape, measuring tape on its side with the numbers to the bottom. Take note of what that is and compare it to the front, what it will be sewn to. What I've noticed is there's about three 
eighths of an inch ease in that bust area. And that's for the whole distance of that about four inches above and below the apex. Bottom of the apex or underneath two inches. Now I'm going to walk down to the waistline and see how that fits. Again, seam line upon seam line, ignoring seam allowance. Fits perfectly to the waist. And then let's measure to the hem. Good fit. Match the two, marking the hem from the center front piece to the side piece. Now I can correct the hemline on the muslin of the side front. A right angle at the base of that seam for about an inch and then curving up to the side seam to have the shaped hem. This is the shape the new pattern piece will be, the inside drawn markings. So, once again, I'm going to take the original pattern without seam allowance away from the piece with seam allowance. To make your patterns this way makes it incredibly easy to make changes. I had, when fitting Morgan, cut away some of the princess armhole seam from the muslin, which is why the paper pattern is higher. I'm aligning the bust and waist and the grain lines. Either the grain lines will be on top of each other or perfectly parallel, the length grain lines. Transferring the new hemline to the original pattern piece. Correcting the side seam. Dotting in the new armhole seam line. Now going over it to make a continuous line. Filling in the new seam line for the armhole princess side front bust area. I often will dot them in and then use my tool. Sometimes to use the tool, first the tool can kind of obscure some of the line. It makes it easier if I dot it in first. 
You can see how much different the bust area is, especially under the bust. Noting where the new notches will be. One is on the apex. The other two are about two inches above and below the apex. Filling in the seam allowance for the shaped hem. Except for the hem lines, where I'm leaving a quarter inch seam allowance, the excess on the pattern pieces is cut away, so I will have to go back and add seam allowance. What a different shape this is. Look at the pattern piece on the left and compare it with the muslin on the right before any changes are made. The original paper pattern is plenty big enough to accommodate this new pattern piece and just redraw seam allowance. Any old markings that are not being used, I've just crossed out, and I want to make sure I know what, which the new notch marks are. Pin your pattern down securely. Now I'm refining the seam allowance. At the very bottom, there wasn't a problem, but from here on up, I have to trim away the excess seam allowance. 
using the same seam allowance measurements as before. In this area, I'm going up 3 quarters of an inch and squaring it off 3 quarters of an inch from that very tip of the pattern inside the seam allowance piece of paper. Connect all your dots and we'll trim away the excess. For this particular pattern, my original seam allowances were 3 quarters of an inch except under the arms and at the hemline and those I gave a quarter of an inch. noting the amount of seam allowance. And now extending the notches. Above and below the apex line. Marking where the ease is between the notches and cutting off the excess paper, revealing the new pattern with its new seam allowance. Taking the side back piece and connecting the dots to reveal the new seam line. If you remember, I changed the armhole when I put the muslin on Morgan and determined where the armhole should be. I have corrected the armhole on the pattern of the side front piece. Now I want to correct it on the side back piece 
and it needs to be the same distance from the waist to the underarm. The seam line will be the same length from the waist to the underarm. So I'm putting the waistlines together I marked the waist and the bust line. Now put the waist lines together and measure up to the underarm. You see the paper is a little bit shorter than the muslin, so I want to align the seams and mark on the muslin where the top of the seam allowance will be when it's completed. And I'm also marking the hem at the bottom, including its seam allowance. The seam allowance on the hem I'm leaving in this pattern because it won't get in the way of any of the development. Just checking to see if the muslin has to be trimmed for seam allowance in case I put this together again and refit it to the model. trimming off any excess seam allowance. I know that the center back hem is exactly where I want it to be. So now I have to determine how much to cut off of the center back so that it will fit the side back. I'm filling in the new corrected and lengthened dart at the back neck. Drawing the new shoulder seam. and also the mark where the new neckline is at the inside of the shoulder seam. Lining up the center back seam to the extension for seam allowance on the muslin and also aligning the cross grains of the horizontal balance line right below the neckline, the bust line, and the waistline, and the hip line. Now I can see that this hip I actually let out. So rather than use the original piece of pattern with the seam allowance, because it won't be enough, I'm just going to take this top pattern piece that has no seam allowance, tape paper extending away from the body to create new seam allowance. 
sketching in the new seam lightly. making it a continuous line with my curved tool. Filling in the seam allowance. Just reinforcing the lines of the new dart in the back, or the extended dart in the back. Now I've placed this corrected pattern piece back on the original larger piece that had seam allowance incorporated in it. It's still big enough to cut the rest of the pattern with seam allowance, so why waste paper? Now that I'm pretty sure this pattern will be correct, I will probably do taping instead of penning. Sometimes it's just whichever is easier, closer to me. Just refining the seam allowance, making sure it's nice and uniform. I have a new shoulder seam, so I need to cut off the excess seam allowance from the previous pattern. And now I'm making this a one half inch seam allowance. The armhole was scooped in a little bit, so now I need to refine this seam allowance to fit the new pattern. Marking in the notches, normally I do this in red, but it doesn't really matter. Marking in the center back notch, 
trimming the excess of the seam allowance. You can see the original piece compared to the refined piece. Taking the original side back pattern, placing it on top of the muslin. If you notice, some of the muslin was chopped away during the fitting. Aligning the hip, waist, bust lines and making sure that the grain lines are parallel. Sketching in the new seam lines. Look how much smaller this piece is than the original. That translates to several inches when you take into account you have two side backs and each side back has about an inch taken in at the waist. This seam in the uh, derriere area was let out so I need to add paper to accommodate for that. It's a permanent change, so I'm going to tape it down. Marking the new seam. And dotting where the hemline is. Drawing in the new side seam. Comparing under the arms by putting the seam at the waist together and trimming off the side front piece in the seam allowance to match the side back piece. Now I want to shape the hem as well.
So once again, checking the upper under the arm and then matching it at the waist, bringing the seam lines together and having the same curve for a few inches on either side of the side seam. In other words, transferring the shape of the hem from the side front to the side back. Matching the waist seams, side back and back, and pivoting the seam allowances together. So I'm absolutely sure I know where those seams come at the bottom of the seam. Both need to be the same length. And at this one, I started at the waist and moved down. Filling in the curve for the hem of the side back piece. Marking the seam allowance. and trimming off the excess. Putting the newly shaped side back pattern onto the original pattern paper used to cut the muslin. I'll pen it down matching waist, bust, and hip area, length grain parallel, and again this one's going to be permanent so I'm putting a lot of tape on it. See right at this bottom hip area there's probably a not not enough paper for the seam allowance so I'm going to patch that in the seam allowance is already at the hemline so what I need to do now is the two vertical seams and refine the underarm seam. A right angle right where the underarm meets the side seam. 
trimming off the excess paper. Transferring notches, the first notch was the vertical seam, the second one was the vertical seam under the arm, and now what I'm doing is I'm overlapping the seam allowances and looking at my notches. Yes, they match. What I'm doing is putting seam to seam. Extending the notches. Just checking notch distances, refining and drawing in the notches in the new seam allowance on the side back piece. Crossing out lines I don't need. Establishing a notch for the seam allowance for the hemline. Writing in the seam allowance amount. Notch under the arm. notch at seam allowance, at the hem, at the side seams. The bust area in the front armhole notch The center front piece, if you remember, had the neckline narrowed. In other words, taking a wide angle neck and by putting a dart in it, making it close in. Consequently, the original pattern paper will not do. It will not be the correct shape. So I have to recut a complete new pattern piece to make the full both sides front. Take the appropriate length of pattern paper and fold it in half. This will be my center front line. Fill in with red pencil or ink your center front line, which is also your center front grain line. 
adding new seam allowance. Where I changed the pattern at the neckline by putting a dart in that neckline, it created a little point. Now is when I want to make it a smooth curve. A right angle at center front. Adding your quarter inch seam allowance around the neck. center front notch. Notches, extending the notches into the seam allowance. A notch in the armhole going down the vertical seam in the center front piece. Now fold the fabric together pin the layers down securely and cut the pattern out. Now I want to open the pattern paper so that it's both of the fronts. First checking to make sure notches are transferred before I unpin anything. 
shoulder notches. Right here I'm just putting the pin holes to the other side to show where the grain lines are. I can connect them with my ruler. But I want to open this up now, so I'm taking the pins out and then reestablishing them so that the working pattern with its changes are on one side of the paper. Being flat, I can now draw the grain lines. You do not have to transfer all markings from one side to the other if you do not care to. I like to simply because it not only looks nice, if I'm in a hurry, it really does sometimes take time to check both sides. And if it's on already written on both sides, it just keeps me flowing in my work. Now from right to left, we have the full front, the side front, the side back and the back completed, ready to cut into fabric. <laughs>